right, for those of you who are a hypoglottic lower back person and you get back pain when you are standing, walking or running, then I've got four exercises for you to do to try and sort this out. Now this used to be me, I used to run with, with a hypoglottic back, I was very curved in there, used to get a lot of pain when I was running because I had a really tight lower back, I was jamming those facet joints and had a really weak core. So I've over the years to fix that, I'm going to give you some tips to do for you if that's your scenario. So first thing you've got to think about is if you're in an anterior tilt like that, okay, a hypoglottic back when you're running, it's going to jam those facet joints so you're going to have tight hip flexors, you're going to have a tight lower back and a weak core. Now, it's all well and good just saying, oh, okay, go to neutral, but a lot of people can't go to neutral because they're too tight, too weak, and too tight here. So the first stretch I want you to do is your classic hip flexor stretch. Now with a hip flexor stretch here's a few tips. This one here, yes you're trying to loosen up through here because if you're in an anterior tilt you're in a shortened position a lot of the time of the day. So if you can release that it'll give you an option to actually get into a neutral spine. So that's what you have to do when you go and do the stretch. When you do this don't just lunge forward. Alright, stop that. You've got to try and tilt here first okay so you get the lengthening through the front now we're not just talking hip flexor deep inside and psoas also rectus femoris and it gets a little bit down through the quad so that will also be tight and that's what I'm, you're trying to stretch out at the same time so when I'm doing this I'm activating my glute here I'm doing a posterior drive posterior tilt there which stretches me out through here and I can feel that already gives me some activation here which is all, all automatically I'm correcting my lordotic position, okay? So at that point there, once you've got the stretch, then you can go forward. But you've got to think about pushing forward through here. So you've got to push forward, and then you'll get to the point where you just can't, can't seem to go any further. There's enough pain and enough stretch through there. Then be my guest and put on a bit of that, a bit of rotation, whatever you need. But don't lose this contraction here. Okay, you can do all this, but don't lose that and don't lose and go into that anterior tilt, all right? So one or two minutes on that, both sides, work on that twice for your hip flexor stretch, all right? Now, second stretch I want you to do is your QL stretch because like I said, when you're in a hyperlodotic position and you're running like this, this is all jammed up, all this is really short, so we need to lengthen it out. So for that one, go into your classic QL stretch, make sure bend the knee. All right, you're not trying to stretch out your hamstring, you're trying to get opening up in this lower back and flexion in this lower back because it's been jammed into extension for so long. So reach forward into here, grab onto that, and when you rotate, make sure that you slowly go this way, get enough drive there, you'll feel a little bit of stretch perhaps through there, and then you've got to try and come over. Gosh, it's sunny today. Got to come over this way, open you up through here. Now you may just find you start feeling it in your obliques and a little bit of extensors but eventually you'll get through all that tightness and into that QL making sure you're always rotated back, rotated over and again hold it out, creep this down a little bit until there's a bit of tension here, not too much and get it right through there. Then you can add on a bit of this as well if you want, if you really want to overdo it but don't come forward. Now that one is really powerful for you to be able to then open up into neutral. So these people are stuck in this position here. To be able to do that, you need flexibility there. That's going to help you with it. All right? So those first two are the two major muscle groups that are shortened when you're in the anterior tilt, so, or hyperlodotic. So we've just helped you with both those muscles. Now, that's not all you have to do. You have to work on your strengthening part, your core stability. Now, majority of the time, if you're in a hyperlodotic, this, like I said, is weak. So we need to work on your core, but pretty specifically. You've got to think about, if I'm standing, walking, or running, I need my static core endurance. I don't need the ability to be able to do sit-ups. I need the ability to hold my neutral spine and switch this on and keep it on for a long period of time in a neutral position because that's what I want to be when I'm running to stop my back pain. So first thing you do is you're doing a knee float. Now this is a classic old school Pilates but it's really important for you as hyperlodotic people to work on. So you're going to go, I'll show you this way, is you try and find that neutral spine that you've loosened it up. 
Then what you're going to do is a knee float. Now I'll hold my head up so I can talk to you. Is you basically hold that neutral spine there, turn your core on by holding a Wii, and if you don't know how to do that, check our other videos on how to do that. But you're going to float one leg up like this. Now here's the training part. What you've got to try and do is as my leg extends outwards, I'm not allowed to go into an anterior tilt. So I've got to keep my neutral spine I started off with, and as I extend here to here, I'm trying to stabilize through here and extend at the hip. So I'm going to extend down the hip. As I get lower, this is going to be harder. I have to work lower down here, go right down to it's above the ground, and then bring it back, place it on the ground, keep my core on, and then swap. And as I swap, don't shift or rock the boat, swap to the other side. As I lower that one down, same drill. Don't let yourself go into that position there. Because imagine that's what's happening when you're running. Okay, when you're pushing backwards, if you've got no strength here, when you run, when you drive through, it's just doing that. And so we've got to fight that and go, I need to be in that position. So one, I'm learning the strength there, right? I'm learning how to, I'm oh sorry, I'm getting the strength of being in that position, but I'm also learning a pattern of movement. When I extend my leg, I don't want my back doing that, okay? I've got to learn a motor pattern. That takes time and time and repetition. So you'll have to spend quite a bit of time on that low level stuff. Don't go too hard where you try and lift two legs and put two legs out for strength because you've got to learn position and motor patterning first, then you build on the strength. So in that regards, I'm going to teach you a strength one, but we're going to dial it back a bit. So the next strength thing I want you to do I'm going to move into the shade because it's pretty hot out here. As you go into a plank, but I want you doing it on your knees. Okay, in fact, I might just turn this around so you can see me. Because if you start up on your knees, you'll do a lot better with your position than if you start doing it on your feet. All right, especially if you don't do much, many planks, you need to work on this. So, what I like to do, go down into this position here and then bring your bum forward. All right, so you're in this position here. You've got to make sure that you're not in hyperlodotic, okay? So you're trying to change the pattern of movement. You need to bring yourself in a neutral by turning your buttock on and turning your core on. And then it's simply about keeping your buttocks on and keeping your core on and just statically and getting that endurance and building up that strength. So I've got, if I show you standing, instead of being there, you've got to be here, right? And it's just holding that on, but holding those on. And most people, don't do a plank with their glutes on. They just let their glutes go. You need your glutes. So being in this position here and turning that on, and I don't mean go ridiculous and really crank it, just enough to hold your neutral spine and keep those glutes activated. And over time, like we're talking over a minute, you'll feel though that inner core working, you'll feel your outer core working, you'll feel those lower abdominals really switching on. And that's the strength thing that you need to start with to help you keep that neutral alignment. And trust me, you start working on those two stretches and those two exercises, do that before you have to be standing all day or before you have to go running, you'll last a lot longer and you'll probably find there's a lot less pain and you can actually run or stand with a bit better posture in here to help you get rid of that pain. All right, that's enough for this week. See you next time.